Now there are some flat earth channels who will try to convince you that the size of the sun is changing by playing videos like this. In that video, it does look like the apparent size of the sun is changing. But what you are seeing is in fact the sun flare reducing as the sun gets closer to the horizon. I have demonstrated in a previous video why it is essential to use a solar filter. Here we can see the sun flare. That is not the true size of the sun at all. If we put a filter over it, you can see that the actual size of the sun is much smaller. The other type is this one, which is using a specialized film called Beta Solar Film, and it does the same thing. It gives a slightly different color of the sun. This gives you a more natural color on the sun. And this is the one I was using in my footage today. Where I had two cameras running side by side, one without a filter, and one with a filter. And you can see when observed with a solar filter, the size is not changing. Distances on land are the same in the flat hard disk world would also obviously mean that distances over sea couldn't be. As with problems on land, the further south you go, the greater the discrepancies would become if you travel over the ocean in anything other than a north-south direction. This also screws up simple travel. Qantas fly direct from Sydney to Johannesburg in South Africa six days a week. It's a direct distance of 11,060 kilometers with the flight taking around 13 hours and 20 minutes, at a speed of 830 kilometers an hour. As you might have expected, things on the flat Earth aren't quite so simple. Sydney Airport is 151.1772 degrees east. 
Johannesburg's O.R. Tambo Airport is 28.2461 degrees east. The difference in longitude is therefore 122.9311 degrees. Sydney Airport is 13,759 kilometers from the North Pole. O.R. Tambo Airport is 12,894 kilometers from the North Pole. Now that we have two sides of the triangle and the angle between them, we can use the law of cosines to calculate the straight line distance from Sydney to Johannesburg on the flat Earth. The distance d is equal to the root of a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c. When we crunch the numbers, we find that on the fantasy flat Earth, the distance is 23,419 kilometers. This is more than twice as far as it is in reality. For the Boeing 747-400s that Qantas use on this route, this poses something of a problem. With maximum payload, they have a maximum range of 13,438 kilometers, which means they would fall rather short of their intended destination, which somewhat defeats the purpose of a direct flight. Fear not, though, the route taken by the Flatard Airways flight would pass over Papua New Guinea, China, the Himalayas, India, the Gulf of Oman, the Arabian Peninsula, the Gulf of Aden, the countries of East Africa, including a nice view of Lake Malawi, so could refuel along the way. There is, however, a lack of stopover options along the route. The Tibetan Plateau has a paucity of international airports. India's Indira Gandhi Airport is a bit too close to maximum range. Qantas don't fly there anyway. The next best option with a long enough runway might be Nataji Subhas Chandra Bose International. However, it's more than 1,000 kilometers off the most direct route on the flat Earth, and Qantas don't fly there either. So, if the Earth is flat, where do these flights go? Since no passengers who have flown direct between Sydney and Johannesburg have ever spotted China, the Himalayas, the Arabian Peninsula or Eastern Africa, let alone stopped at any of their bloody airports, we can be quite sure that this isn't the route taken. Also, as passengers on these flights do arrive in the scheduled 13 and a half hours or so, Flatard Airways would have to fly at an average speed of 1,756 kilometers per hour and faster with a refueling stop rather than the more sedate 830 we found earlier. The maximum speed for a 747-400 is 988 kilometers per hour.